You're watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome back. Last year in the state budget, the state set aside $2 million for a pilot program that helped keep food that's grown and made here in the state in Illinois. But with a tighter fiscal situation this year, it's unclear if that program is going to continue. Joining us now is one of the people really pushing for that program to become permanent. It's Josh Snedden with the Illinois Stewardship Alliance. Josh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. So let's just start here. This program, you guys were trying to get it passed as a bill in the first place, turned into a pilot program in the budget. Now you really want to see this codified and made permanent. What does this bill really, really accomplish here? Yeah, so uh, SB 3077, the Local Food Infrastructure Grant Act, will help build a more resilient food system here in Illinois. It will also help the economics of our farmers, ranchers, and food businesses to feed our communities and to keep that food here. Um, so one thing that isn't often known, approximately 95% of the food we eat in Illinois is being brought in from somewhere else. So we're talking 95% of a $40 billion industry is actually leaving the state. So this program not only helps the farmers and ranchers trying to feed our communities, but it keeps those economic dollars in our state as well. So you're a farmer in Illinois. And what, what are the hurdles or, or what are the circumstances that lead farmers to need to do that? Why is it difficult right now to keep the food in Illinois? Yeah, so one of the hardest challenges for many farmers or food businesses is being able to afford the infrastructure we need to be able to meet the food safety standards, to sell to institutions, to be able to keep that food stored uh, and fresh before it can get to the community, and then those refrigerated vehicles. So often very expensive pieces of equipment that are needed to get food from you know, Fairbury, Illinois, up to Chicago, Illinois, from Moni, where we are, all around Cook and Will County. Um, and it's, it's expensive. It's another thing you need to do. And, and what people don't realize, farmers do everything. You're a business owner, you're growing the crops, you're marketing, you're selling. And oh, by the way, you now have to secure your own infrastructure to be able to get your food to your community. So I wonder with that, and, and how successful was this program in just the past year that we've seen it? Because I know this has been a focus not only at the state level, we've seen some federal money come into the state as well. Are we already seeing the, the benefits of this? Yeah, so we haven't seen the immediate benefits yet in terms of the projects that uh, were funded and, and recently announced uh, the first 19 award recipients. However, there's this unprecedented grant funding for these pieces of infrastructure and equipment that are oftentimes not included in grant programs because they are capital investments um, owned by a, a single entity. And so we will see with the funding from the state this year that is, uh, was distributed in March, we're expecting that impact to happen this farm cycle. So just now in Illinois, it's, it's still early in the spring, people are starting to plant their crops, this infrastructure is going to be installed throughout the year, and we will realize a positive impact. What does that impact look like? Because we have, you know, you said you can drive, you take the food all across the state, but there's 95% of the food in, that people in Illinois consume are, is coming from out of state. There's a market share there. Where does the, where is the infiltration, I guess, of Illinois food, Illinois made food? Is it on grocery store shelves? And is there, you know, a conversation that needs to happen with the large grocery chains to make that happen? How does, how do people start to see this product on, on their, in their grocery store? Yeah, so we had uh, tremendous uh, applications, 250 of them from around the state. Uh, and one of the themes we saw were an establishment of food hubs. Um, so farmer owned or cooperatively owned um, institutions that will be able to aggregate food and products from multiple farmers, including many of them have post-harvest processing to meet those food safety standards, the cold storage, and then the distribution. Um, and we're talking about areas that have been hit the hardest with uh, food insecurity and food deserts. Um, you know, one of our, our projects that got funded is Leaf Food Hub in Southern Illinois. Um, there's a whole county in Senator Fowler's district in, Senator Il in Southern Illinois that has zero grocery stores. So these food hubs are creating opportunities for these food products to get into the communities 
um, without the need to have those conversations with grocery stores and larger chains. Because when you start selling to, to grocery stores and, and those large scale distributors that often span many states, the margins get so slim that it's really hard for farmers to be co competitively priced and make a living such that their business is sustainable to support their family and, and themselves. So this is a this is all about preventing that kind of food. It, it, like you said, it, it's two birds. It, it gets the farmers the living that they've that they've been working for, and it and it helps address food insecurity in different parts of the state. Yeah, so it's a multifaceted program. Um, we are, you know, primarily targeting Illinois raising grown products, uh, which helps farmers. We then um, non for profits. Uh, units of government, uh, schools, and institutions were all eligible for the grant. Uh, so it was very broad. And what we saw is a lot of collaboration between these organizations in terms of making sure that you have, say, uh, a church, St. Paul's Episcopal Church in, in Peoria, who's collaborating directly with a farmer to be able to build a commissary kitchen at the church that has a physical building that they can outfit and update an existing kitchen, which relieves some of the burden and, and the cost associated with establishing something from scratch. Um, and so, and that's a very food insecure area. We use um, the Illinois Stewardship Alliance and the Review Committee use the CDC High Vulnerability Index as a measure for that food insecurity. So we took an existing metric um, and, and use that as part of our benchmark as we are looking at projects around the state. So going forward now, obviously this bill needs to make it through and, and to, to solidify this program. What are the conversations like with lawmakers and, and trying to sell them on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm very positive about SB 3077 passing through the Senate and moving into the House as a bill. Bipartisan support, co-sponsors from uh, both Democrats and Republicans, and, and the proof is in the pudding. We, we know we had 250 applicants. We know that they were requesting $23.5 million in funding, or 10 times the allocation we had. Um, and we know they came from every corner, if you could say Illinois has corners, of the state. Um, and so those conversations are very positive. They, our legislators know it's a need. Uh, they recognize the need to pass the bill. Uh, where we're hearing some pushback and some challenges are in regards to that tight budget. It is a tight fiscal year. There are some concerns uh, with how the budget is going to go as a whole. So when you're asking for appropriations, um, it's just difficult. Um, and we do expect to see at least $2 million. I mean, I, I'm staying optimistic that our legislators are going to take the pilot program, recognize its success, and allow us to continue this program this year and, and hopefully many years beyond. All right, well, Josh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Have a great day. That will do it for us on this week's episode of Capital Connection. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you again next week. For Capital Connection, I'm Cole Hank.